Hello guys, David here, founder of SuperThread and welcome to our second devlog. So in this devlog, I'd like to talk about SuperThread's tech stack. Now, before I do that, I'd like to talk about the features which I wanted to have inside of SuperThread, which led to us deciding what our tech stack is. So the first thing I wanted SuperThread to be is fast. I wanted it to be extremely fast. I come from the gaming world where we do 60 FPS or even more, which means that every frame shows up in 17 milliseconds. In fact, if you look at your Chrome browser, it renders things at 60 frames per second. So I wanted SuperThread to have the same experience. So when you click on something, it shows up absolutely immediately. You don't see any delay whatsoever. In fact, we are aiming to achieve this 17 milliseconds render time when you click on something. And this is because SaaS products don't need to be slow and clunky. They can be really fast and snappy. The second thing I wanted to achieve with SuperThread is delightfulness. In games, it's very, very important when you create a game that it feels nice. It's a nice place to be. It's a nice place to visit, if you like. But my experience with SaaS products is that they are quite slow and clunky. And I don't see why that should be. So at SuperThread, we are obsessed with the detail. Every pixel matters. We go over and over and over every single UI element and every single UI detail. And we are super excited to actually build something that feels nice and it's a nice place to be and it's a nice place to visit. The third thing I wanted to achieve with SuperThread is flexibility. Very often when I used issue trackers, I find that they are trying to impose a certain way of doing things onto companies and teams. It's very, very difficult for any team to organize itself. And if it has a issue tracker standing in the way of organizing yourself, then that makes it even more difficult. So with SuperThread, I wanted to make it extremely flexible so you can mold it to fit your team. No one can tell you how you should organize yourself. Only you can decide and do that. The tool you should be using should be able to cater for that. Fourth is I wanted to offer data isolation so that if you're a company, for example, from the EU, and it's important for you because of a policy or regulation that the database sits inside of EU, with SuperThread, you're going to be able to choose a region where your data sits. So eventually, we hope to offer many regions. And five, I wanted to choose a tech stack that's actually nice to use. Yes, we could have used assembly language to actually compile everything into binary code, but that wouldn't have been very fast and it would have been very, very frustrating for developers. We were very, very careful to choose technologies which are actually nice to use for developers. Now let's talk about the technologies we chose which help us achieve our requirements. So on the front end, we chose Vue.js. We could have gone with React or Angular, which is by Facebook and Google, but we chose Vue.js because Vue.js is really light Weight, and it's designed in a very thoughtful way. Now, if you look at the designer of Vue.js, Evan Vue, he's a very clever and thoughtful guy, and I recommend you look him up on YouTube. And the reason why we chose Vue.js is because it's, it's a lightweight and really fast and snappy and nice to use JavaScript library. For backend, we chose Golang. And Golang is this language which was done by Google and it compiles down into binary code. So which means that basically once it's compiled into binary code, it sits closer to the metal, increasing the speed. And despite Golang being a garbage collected language, because of the runtime and because of the magical compiler which they've built, it compiles down into a really, really efficient package, which, which runs in a very, very snappy and fast manner. For our database, we chose Redis. Now, I've spent my career using SQL and over time I realized the limitations of SQL, especially because of the joins which you have. Now, I do know that you can use SQL as a key value database, but I've always been kind of interested in key value because as soon as the first open source key value store was released, which is Cassandra DB, I immediately engaged with the community and, and I even did some tests for them. And since then, I've been thinking in a key value database store. Now, the database we use is Redis. And I know what you're thinking, Redis is a caching database. Now, that may be true, but Redis can also serve as a real database. Just because the data is stored in RAM, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it as a normal database. Because there is a feature in Redis which allows you to write the data down on the hard drive which means that if the computer crashes, you can restore the data. Now, Redis is really cool because it's very lightweight and therefore the number of CPU cycles it takes to go and retrieve data from RAM is very, very few. So you have this combination of Vue.js talking to Golang microservices, which talk to Redis, which results in a very, very fast response time. So on average, right now, our API endpoints on a local machine, returning data, returning real data, take about four milliseconds. Now, in order to serve the microservices, I would have normally gone with something like Kubernetes, but this time I didn't because in my experience, I found that with Kubernetes, it's really cool and it's very good for scaling, but when something goes wrong, there's very little visibility as to what's going on inside. And I wanted to create something which 
can be read and understood by normal developers. So if something goes wrong, I wanted to have this transparency as to what's going on inside of the system so we can actually optimize it and improve it for later on. So we ended up using our own kind of hybrid orchestrator. So that concludes our tech stack. Tell us what you guys think. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to perhaps get some suggestions from you. Have you used something faster? Have you perhaps used Rust? What's your experience using Rust? Have you used any other databases that are faster than Redis? I'd really love to hear from you because we don't want to be living in a bubble here. We want to engage with our community and developers so we can perhaps learn something. Thank you very much guys for watching. Until next time, keep safe.